Hey, and welcome to our hour-long season finale of Capital City Sports. I'm Ed Cahill. And I'm Madeline Green. Coming up on this week's show, we have plenty of Gamecock sports to cover this week. But first, we'll see how the football team did in their regular season finale against Clemson. And basketball season is underway at Carolina. We have highlights from three men's basketball games and two highlights from the women's squad. And at the end of the show, we'll take a look back at this season's funnier moments and we'll also pay tribute and say farewell to a Capital City sports legend. But first, the Gamecocks headed to Death Valley this weekend to take on rival Clemson in their regular season finale. That's right, Ed. The Gamecocks had a chance to end the Tigers' hopes of making a bowl game, but those hopes didn't last long. Let's send it up to Clemson for more. Death Valley in Clemson was packed to the rafters and riled up last Saturday as the Gamecocks came to town in the regular season finale. And you know the heated rivalry brings out the crazies, and despite the rainy weather, this was no exception. Interim coach Dabo Swinney on the sideline, hoping for a statement win against Carolina and possibly a removal of that interim title. He'd get that and then some. By the day's end, the Gamecocks would be on the wrong side of a 34-14 stomping that left fans scratching their heads and wondering where it all went wrong. Well, it started on offense. Chris Smelly with a nightmare day, four interceptions, and when he wasn't getting picked off, he was just making bad throws, but he stayed in the entire game, and afterwards, Coach Spurrier told us why. I told you we are going to let one quarterback go. Everybody wants to see one quarterback. We saw one quarterback the whole game, and... Uh... You know, if we need to make a change, uh, we'll make another change and let the other one go the whole game. I'm tired of changing quarterbacks. You know, you'd think we'd know who our best is. And uh, maybe right now, it's, uh, it's still up in the air. But it was a long day for special teams as well. For the first time since 1999, Coach Ray Richleski sees his special teams have a punt blocked. And that would set up an early field goal for the Tigers. After the game, Coach Richleski gave his thoughts on the special team slip-up. They're not a block team, but they had a couple guys going after it. They picked one guy to work on, they worked on him, and, and they got it. And we might have been a little slow with the time. And, uh, you know, it's all streaks come to an end. And rounding out the day of frustration for USC was a defense that was relatively powerless against the Tigers. James Davis rumbled in for three touchdowns, and Clemson used all its offensive weapons to get past the Carolina D that Coach Ellis Johnson says has lost some of its fire. We're not performing well right now. We're not playing well fundamentally, and we're not consistent with anything we're doing assignment-wise. And it's, it's really a puzzle. We've got to go back and make sure we are before the bowl game. Our inconsistency started when we started changing the lineup a couple, three weeks ago and, and didn't have our same guys in there. But we just haven't played well. And, I, you know, it's, it's individuals. It's, it's, uh, it's got to be coaches. We've got to go back and self-examine and make sure we're doing the right things, you know. While Carolina fell once again to its hated rival, there is still a bowl game in the future. Whether the team can bounce back and perform up to expectations remains to be seen, but the season finale in Death Valley was certainly not what Chris Smelly and company would like to be remembered for. For Capital City Sports, I'm Brian Walker. For more on Saturday's loss to the Tigers, let's send it over to Corey Burkharth in the boardroom. All right, thank you, Madeline, and welcome into the boardroom here on Capital City Sports, our 12th and final show of season four. I'm Corey Burkharth, being joined by this guy for quite possibly the last time ever. He's Alex Raleigh, former sports editor for the Daily Gamecock. He now covers USC for the Seneca Daily Messenger, and in one week, he will graduate from USC. Alex. Thank you for being with us this week. Absolutely. Would not miss this, Corey. You know better than that. Alex is the last remaining original member from Capital City Sports, dating back about four years to when it was a radio show on WUSC. He made the transition to the TV show, and here we are now. Here we are. Alex, first topic. We're going to go to Clemson. The Gamecocks went up to Death Valley over Thanksgiving weekend, expecting, honestly, to get a win. Mm -hmm. What happened? 
Chris Smelly happened, and there, there's no other way to put it. Four interceptions, three which led to 21 points in the first half. Uh, the fourth one was really of no consequence, but basically four, three interceptions in the first half uh, pretty much stymied them. Uh, the defense was playing well, and aside from the three drives in the first half with 21 points given up by the USC turnovers, then they have almost basically have shut down Clemson's offense. So. You can't keep putting them back out there on the field. Chris Smelly's performance really doomed the Gamecocks. All right. Well, let's talk about Chris Smelly's performance. He had the interceptions. Mm -hmm. Clemson had what, 21 points off of turnovers. Unfortunately, was it another case of too big, too early? The Gamecocks just couldn't get out of the hole. Well, this offense isn't made to rally from a 21. Actually, counting the field goal, 24-point deficit. Uh, obviously, when you get down like that and you've got a quarterback who obviously doesn't have his head on straight for uh, that game, then you're kind of screwed and you're kind of stuck in a hole, and that's exactly what's happened with South Carolina, especially in that Carolina Clemson game. All right. Defensively, the way they played against Florida, and then you had what you had against Clemson. Mm -hmm. Any defensive problems there, or is that really just an offensive turnover thing? Well, it, it's, it's partially a little bit of both. I think the defense needs to be worried because a lot of those turnovers were kind of happening deep, uh, especially the first interception that Clemson just went on some, you know, 89 yard play, 89 yard drive or something like that. So the defense still gave up yardage and it still gave up points. The only problem is they kept putting them out there so much in both of those games. So I think there is some worry on defense. They've obviously, Ellis Johnson said they've been backsliding uh, over the last couple weeks and he doesn't know how to fix it. So there is some concern on the defensive side as well. All right. Dabo Sweeney gets the job after beating USC. Right. Would he have gotten the job if the Gamecocks got the win? Uh, not as easily. I think he still probably would have gotten the job. The fact that he took a Clemson team that was basically in shambles and rallied them to at least a 500 season uh, is pretty impressive, especially for a guy with no, not even assistant head coaching experience or coordinator experience. So to have him do that, I think he still would have been a really strong candidate. But with Tennessee's hire of Lane Kiffin, I think that pretty much sealed the deal for him to get it. And the win over Carolina absolutely sealed the envelope, mailed it in, done deal. All right, I'll tell you what's a done deal is this block of the boardroom. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back later in the show. We're going to talk some more about USC sports, but until then, we have plenty of highlights coming right at you. We'll see you in a bit. Coming up after the break, we're just getting started on our season finale. We'll take a quick break, but coming up, we'll send it over to the Colonial Life Arena as the men's basketball team hosted the Winthrop Eagles. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The men's basketball team was off to a 2-0 start two weeks ago when they hosted the Winthrop Eagles. Let's send it over to Corey Burkarth in the Colonial Life Arena. That's right. Thank you, Ed. The Winthrop Eagles making the trip down from Rock Hill, taking on the South Carolina Gamecocks at the Colonial Life Arena on Sunday afternoon. Coach Darren Horn won in his debut on Friday night. Hopefully the Gamecocks could get to 2-0 early in the game. Brandon Conrad, he's going to drain the three, put the Gamecocks up 3-0. He had six points in the game. Dominique Archie, like he always does, slams it to the house. 15-0. The Gamecocks jumped out over the Eagles early. Austin Steed's going to get in on the action. He had eight points on Sunday, two of them right there on the layup. Gamecocks up 17-0. Eagles get on the board right there with the three-pointer from Faison. Winthrop's fans making fun of the Gamecocks for the loss to Florida the day before. That's all right. They would not lose today. Mike Holmes doing work in the paint. That's called a bucket. He would get injured on the play, but fine from there. Winthrop's Burton is going to drain the jumper. He's not done. He's going to get a three-pointer right here. The Gamecocks still lead big time. He had 13 points. Zam Frederick, get used to this because he always does this from downtown. Hits the three. Gamecocks up 47 to 31. He ain't done. He's got one more in him. On the turnover here, he's going to take the ball. Come up the court from way downtown. 50 to 31. The Gamecocks on top. He had 12 points in the game. Teammates showing some love for him there on the sidelines. They're also going to show some love for Dominique Archie, who dunked in the first half. <laughs> He's going to do it in the second half. The Gamecocks up by over 15. Evka Benoulas is going to get in on the dunking action. Put the Gamecocks up 69-40 to right there <laughs> doing work. The Gamecocks will roll the Eagles 
86 to 63 as Evka drains the three from downtown, and that's the way it was. Corey Burkharth, Capital City Sports. Coming up after the break, we still have plenty of Gamecock sports to cover. But next, we have the first of three women's volleyball highlights as the team hosted Alabama. Don't go away, we'll be right back. With three more matches left in their season, the women's volleyball team still had hopes for making the postseason. But first, they would have to get past the Alabama Crimson Tide. Let's send it over to Mike Wadsworth in the volleyball competition facility for more. After back-to-back -back SEC losses to Kentucky and Tennessee, the Gamecocks look to get back to their winning ways against Alabama, and they left the Crimson Tide wishing they were as good as their football team here in the first set. Belita Salters with the early kill. The Gamecocks would jump out to the 12-3 lead, and they would not look back. Bridget denson Dorman setting up Hannah Lowing here for the kill. Hannah Lowing was impressive in the first set. She would have a team-high five kills, and the Gamecocks would go on to take the first set 25-14. And in set two, the 15 and 11 Crimson Tide were out to prove themselves. Brooks Webster was an absolute beast in the second and third sets. She would have a match high 17 kills, and this second set would turn out to be a good one. Not only would it push past 25, this game would get into the 30s. The Gamecocks had five tries at set point before they could put it away, but Hannah Lowing gets up on the block here. The Gamecocks take set two, 33 to 31 and they go into the break up two sets to none looking to complete the sweep and they remain steady in the third set. Kunicic with the kill here. She would have a team high six kills on the set. Bridget denson Dorman getting in on the action on the setter dump. She'd have 39 assists. The Gamecocks would complete the sweep and after Kaki gets in his word, head coach Ben Samara talked about the play of hand allowing and his middle blockers. Our middle blockers are so good which opens up our outside hitters. Hannah had a great match because our middles have had a great season and you know Hannah will tell you the same thing. The great the thing that Hannah does a great job for us though is she makes those middles an option which makes her life a lot easier. So when we pass the ball to target our middles are part of the offense and then we can set the ball over them and we're usually one on one out on the outside. For Capital City Sports, I'm Mike Wadsworth. For more on everything in the world of Gamecock sports, let's send it back over to Corey Burkharth in the boardroom. All right, thank you, Madeline. Welcome back to the boardroom here on Capital City Sports, our final show of the fall semester. Alex, real quick. One thing I wanted to let you know, our co-host Madeline, her roommate Laura, a big fan of the boardroom and an even bigger fan of Alex Riley. So All right. just wanted to throw that out there. Ladies and gentlemen, the still single Alex Riley. He hasn't been able to beat that streak since February, so maybe we can I love how he brings this stuff up now. Well, Alex, I'm just I'm just doing my part to help you out. Let's go and recap the football season if you want. Looking back on this season, what is going to be your number one headline? Number one headline is obviously that this team started off strong and finished weak. Uh, this has been the standard issue of Spurrier at least the last two years, if not three years, if you want to talk about it that way. Uh, this is a team that should have beaten uh, some of the teams on their schedule, ended up not beating them, and ended up hurting Carolina. They could have been a nine-win team, should have been an eight-win team, ended up a seven-win team, could have easily been a six-win team. So this is, a, this is a squad right now that is really struggling to find its identity and really struggling to get above that hump that we all thought Steve Spurrier was going to be able to conquer. Okay. You take the loss to Vanderbilt by seven points on the mm -hmm. road, the mm -hmm. loss to Georgia at home by seven points, and then you throw in the loss at home to LSU by seven points. Is this going to be a season of missed opportunities or a season of beating a Tennessee team that was down? getting lucky against Ole Miss and beating a Kentucky team that was no good. I think it's going to be uh, missed opportunities. I, I really think that if South Carolina had to do it all over again, obviously they should have. I, I would even say that the Vanderbilt loss at the time was not as painful as it, as it should have been. Uh, this is a Vanderbilt team that was very much improved this year, going bowling, a very quality team, and they happened to just squeak out a win that day. But to lose to Georgia, to see what happened to Georgia down the stretch and to know that 
if you had a little bit more offense, you probably should have been in that ball game. And then to lose to LSU, but the way LSU finished their season and to have had the lead in that game, it was at your own place and you had a chance to really do it. Those two in particular, Georgia and LSU, will always stand out in my mind. The Vanderbilt, that was Carolina's one fluke loss of the year. They're obviously entitled to that. Clemson, though, obviously a debacle. So uh, this, is, this is definitely a season of missed opportunities. All right. Each and every week at the end of the show, I have you pick score and a prediction mm -hmm. for the game. We don't know what bowl game Carolina is going right. to, so yep. I hate to do this to you. Okay. You have to predict the bowl game. Okay and predict a score and predict a winner against an opponent who we don't know in a game that we don't know we're playing in yet. All right, well then, let's see. Uh, obviously, it's either gonna be the, the Outback or the Chick-fil-A Bowl is, is the two uh, that Carolina's battling for right now. I think LSU is gonna end up going to the Chick-fil-A Bowl uh, which leaves Carolina open for the Outback Bowl. And I think that the Outback Bowl president has said numerous times that uh, Carolina fans travel well, having Steven Garcia as the starter in Tampa, so on and so forth, great storylines, blah, blah, blah. So I think Carolina plays in the Outback Bowl. I think they play Iowa. And I think that they come out a 24-21 to 21 winner, which means I can say to my youth minister, Penn State fan, we'll mail you a tape of how to beat Iowa. Enjoy. All right, I got no problem with that prediction. I'm going to go with Riley because I trust him. So we're going to come back later in the show for what could possibly be the last appearance of a Capital City sports legend. We'll see you in a bit. Later in the show, we'll check back in with the men's basketball team to see how they did at home against USC Upstate and Gardner-Webb. But next, it's back over to the volleyball competition facility as the Gamecocks hosted Mississippi State. We'll be right back on the other side of the break. Don't go away. Two days after beating Alabama, the women's volleyball team hosted Mississippi State. For more on that match, let's send it down to Mike Wadsworth. Mississippi State came to town on a 13-game losing streak, and it couldn't have come at a better time for the Gamecocks. It was senior day. Head coach Ben Samara giving Belita Salters, Danila Concepcion, and Petra Lorenzi the start for the Gamecocks. But in the first set, it was Ivan Kunicic leading the way for the Gamecocks with seven kills. And the Gamecocks would put together some nice runs in the first set. Belita Salters leading the way on those. She would have an incredible game out there, leaving her lasting impressions on the volleyball competition facility court, literally smashing the ball down there. And the Gamecocks take the first set 25 to 10. Megan Laughlin gets in on the action here in the second set. She'd have five kills on the set, but it was Belita Salters and Kunicic who would remain steady for the Gamecocks. Salters pounding this overpass down, and the Gamecocks take set two, 25 to 14. And the third set will be dedicated entirely to Belita Salters. She would have an amazing game. In the third set, she'd have seven kills alone. She would end up with 15 total on the match. Her performance in this one and on the weekend was good enough to get her SEC Player of the Week honors. And Salters continues her record book assault for the Gamecocks. Carolina would go on to win this one 25 to 8 in the third set. They'd complete the sweep over Mississippi State. And head coach Ben Samara talked about his big middle, Belita Salters. You know, Belita's been our, you know, she's the most physical player on our team and has been a leader, not just not just in the matches, but in our training. And I think, you know, I'm so glad she's had the senior season that she can be proud of because it's been a four-year, five, four and a half year body of work that uh, has produced what you see today. Carolina looks to get to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2002, so stay with us the rest of the season to see how the women's volleyball team finishes up. For Capital City Sports, I'm Mike Wadsworth. After losing their season opener to Penn State, the Lady Gamecocks hosted the Clemson Tigers at the Colonial Life Arena. Could Coach Don Staley get the first W of her career at Carolina against her in-state rival? Jared Munch is at the Colonial Life Arena with all the highlights. It's the Lady Gamecocks in their 2008 home opener. Brianna Dickerson and USC looking for their first win of the season, taking on upstate rival Clemson. April Parker would get the scoring started with this baseline jumper here for the Tigers. But Lauren Fahoon would answer with this acrobatic shot, finding the bucket. And then the Tigers would take over. Here's April Parker again. She'd have 10 points on the night for the Tigers. And then Whitney Hood getting in on the action herself. And the Gamecocks are quickly down 11-2. And then CJ Pace refusing to be a victim. 
beasting it over three Clemson defenders and finding the net. And then on the other end, senior forward Demetrius Adams getting the huge block. The Clemson would score anyways. Tasha Taylor finding the basket, and the Tigers take a commanding 25-10 to 10 lead midway through the first half. And then a jump shooting battle would ensue. Lali Hardy finding the net, and then Miranda Tate on the other end for the Gamecocks getting the jumper of her own. And then Lali Hardy on the other end with a fadeaway, and you guessed it, Miranda Tate shoot the J, three-pointer. And then moments later in transition, Miranda Tate again gets the bucket and the foul and you can hear the crowd is going crazy. Gamecocks trying to make a comeback. Coming out in the second half, Lauren Falone, she's bringing Sexy back and hopefully the Gamecocks too. But it would in the end not be enough. Lily Hardy, she would have 17 on the game leading all scores. And then bad went to worse when Demetrius Adams fouled out. Whitney Hood finishing it off here with the jumper and that would be it. The 52 to 45 loss for the Gamecocks. Dawn Staley, not happy after the game, but still feels like her team needs to have the mojo to keep on going and believe they can win. We, we walk in and we think we're going to outcoach, you know, anybody that's on the opposing bench. And they have to come out and think they're going to win whatever All-Americans, any other team has, and we're going to win the game. So they got to bring it. Staley was pleased with the way her younger players played in the game, especially freshman Lakeisha Sutton and freshman Miranda Tate. I think it was a great game to where our, play, our younger players, um, you saw some good things coming from them. So. Jared Munch, Capital City Sports. Coming up after the break, we'll go back into the boardroom for the final time of the season. But next, we have a triple header of basketball highlights, starting with the men's squad hosting USC Upstate on the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Off to a 3-0 start, the men's basketball team hosted USC Upstate a few days before Thanksgiving. For more on that, let's send it down to the Colonial Life Arena. All right, the Gamecocks at home taking on the USC Upstate Spartans. Coach Horn here talking with Devin Downey and Zam Frederick, and boy would they have themselves a game. Mike Holmes gets the scoring started with the easy two. Then Devin Downey with the drive, dish, and Zam Frederick with the three. Gamecocks up 5-0 early on. Next play, Devin Downey with the steal. He's going to go, and this is easy for him, an easy two layup. But well, USC Upstate, they're hanging around. Bobby Davis with a strong putback. Gamecocks up 11-7. But here's Benoulis adding three to the score. Very next play, Devin Downey. He'll force the steal. He's on a fast break with Benoulis. And the easy lay-in. Gamecocks up 22-7. Back there went on a 13-0 run. Ended here by Nick Schneider with the big dunk. Gamecocks respond. Devin Downey, he is so good at this. He drives the lane underneath the past... They'll go up 15 points there, but then Zam Frederick, he's going to take this game over. Here he is. He's going to drive the lane, stop, turn around, drains it. A few minutes later, he's going to intercept the upstate pass, and he's going to go the other way. Some more points off turnovers. That was a story of the first half. Here, this might have been the play of the game for him. He's going to take the rebound. He'll just do it all himself. Dribbles down the court. He's going to drive the lane and takes on four defenders and finishes. The Spartans are gonna have to take a timeout after that. The Gamecocks are gonna go up 35 to 12. Frederick getting some love from the teammates and coaches on the sideline. He finishes the night with 23. But then Benoulis will hit his third three of the game. The dish from Downey there. Downey will get another assist on the big alley-oop to Zam Frederick. And then Devin Downey will stop and pop and hit the three. The Gamecocks are going to go up 47 to 25 at halftime. They're fired up. Zam Frederick will pick up right where he left off in the first half. Drains the three. The defense was a story of this half. Brandon Conrad forces a steal. Archie finally finishes here with the two. And then gets in the act on the defensive end. The huge block here. That's one of two for Archie on the night, and Mike Holmes will force a steal here. Not the guy you'd expect to force a steal. Throws it down to Conrad, keeps it in bounds. Eventually, the ball will get to Frederick for once again another three-pointer. Gamecocks, they're going to go on to win this game 75-53. to The team now starts the Darren Horn era 3-0. I'm Cameron Weiderman for Capital City Sports. 
In their final game before Thanksgiving, the undefeated men's basketball squad hosted Gardner-Webb at the Colonial Life Arena. For more on that game, let's send it back down to Corey Burkharth. Yeah, thank you, Madeline. The Gamecocks at home taking on Gardner-Webb right before Thanksgiving. USC trying to get to 4-0 on the season. Gardner-Webb was trying to avoid going 0-4. Unfortunately for them, the Gamecocks would be on their game tonight as you see Mike Holmes open up the scoring for the Gamecocks, hits the jumper, Holmes doing work in the paint as he always does. And Brandon Conrad, always a threat from deep. He'll drain the three Gamecocks up 5-0 early in the first half. Now Zam Frederick is going to get the defensive rebound right here. And instead of passing it up, he said, you know what? I got this. He's going to go up the court, make a drive, fake out the defender, hit it, and one. Gamecocks up. Frederick had 18 points, five assists. One of them coming right here as he hits Devin Downey with the easy jumper to put the Gamecocks up by one. Defense working good for USC right here. Get the steal. Frederick to Downey, you've seen it before and you will see it again. Had some hometown fans showing some love for Mr. Wilder. Coach Horn watching his team looking pretty good throughout the game. Dominique Archie from three. He had nine points in the game for the Gamecocks second half. Archie's going to take the pass from Devin Downey, slam it down to the house. USC is up 15 at this point, and Devin Downey, well, you know he's going to make that. The fall down jumper, he had 25 points for USC all night. There you see him getting pumped up. Evka Benoulis drains the three. Not really a shocker there. Frederick Zam's also going to get on the action with the three from downtown. The Gamecocks go on to roll Gardner-Webb. 85 to 70, and that's the way it was. Corey Burkharth, Capital City Sports. As our final show of the fall semester comes to an end, we'll say farewell to the last remaining original member of Capital City Sports. But next, the women's volleyball team hosted the Florida Gators in a match that came down to the wire. Could the Gamecocks get a win in their season finale and possibly sneak into the postseason? Stick around after the break and we'll find out. Desperately needing a win to close out their season, the women's volleyball team hosted the nationally ranked Florida Gators. Trying to make a case for the postseason, the women's volleyball team could help their cause by beating Florida for the second time in three seasons. Let's we'll send it down to Jared Munch at the volleyball competition facility for more. Ivana Kunicic and the Gamecocks finishing their regular season against the 14th ranked Florida Gators. Kunicic would have a huge night, but so would Kelly Murphy with his beautiful kill here for Florida. And like I said, Ivanya getting the kill herself. Belita Salters in her last home game, finding the floor with that one, and the Gamecocks are out to a big lead. Ben Samara liking what he's seeing. The Gators would come back, proving why they're 14th in the nation. Here's Kelly Murphy again with the huge kill. Florida would actually push it their own set point, but push it no further. Lawing with the kill. Cunha Chich with the kill. And the Gamecocks have their own set point in which Florida would try but knock it wide and the Gamecocks take game one in a shocker, 27 to 25. But in set two, those pesky Gators were just relentless, making it rain on the Gamecocks. And to finish it off was six foot two, Kelsey Bowers with this monstrous kill. And Florida takes set two, 25 to 17. The Gamecocks would rebound and take set three, 25, 22. And then the Gators would respond getting set four, 25-21, pushing it to a fifth set in Belita Salters. It's just getting funky here. Still enjoying herself, even though under the pressure situation. She just a couple days ago was named first team All-SEC, and there she is showing why with a huge block. But in a fifth set, the Gamecocks could not pull it out. Cindy Bethel setting it up for Kelly Murphy. Bethel would finish with 31 assists, and Murphy would finish with 17 kills. And that was it. Florida taking it in five sets. Despite the loss, Coach Ben Samara believed the Gamecocks had made a solid case for an NCAA tournament bid. If tonight's match doesn't say we're a team who should be in the tournament, I mean, I, I don't know what does. Uh, we've won over 20 matches. We've got the leading offense in the SEC. We have the most kills. We have the most assists. The NCAA didn't see it that way, and the Gamecocks did not get into the NCAA tournament. We'll have to wait till next year. Jared Munch, Capital City Sports. 
As our season winds down, so does the career of our very own Alex Riley. To send Alex off in style, let's send it over to Corey Burkarth in the boardroom. Farewell to a legend it is, Alex Riley, graduating in just over a week. Personally, when I came here, I didn't think I would live to see the day Alex <laughs> Riley graduated from college. Alex, looking back, four and a half years, you got the bonus semester for got kicks. Got the bonus semester, yeah. How, how was college? It was a blast, man. I had fun. It was a struggle at times, uh, but it was, it was mostly fun, man. If it, if it wasn't for classes, college would be a blast. That is very true. Now, what a lot of our viewers don't know, because a lot of them are freshmen and sophomores that live on campus, and my mom, back in Virginia, <laughs> nice. you were one of the original members of Capital City Sports back when it was a radio show. Talk about that. Uh, yeah, it was me and uh, Tom Benning, Matt Moore, Jake Broom, who is still going to find a way to beat me out of graduating at Carolina. Good luck, Jake. Uh, and Jonathan Hillier and we all uh, got together and decided we we're going to do this radio show. Matt and Tom were doing it. I came on as a guest, and Jake came on as a guest, and Hilliard came on as, as a guest as well. And and uh, Hilliard got the idea one day to turn it into a TV show, and from there, here we are. All right, talk about the transition from the radio to the TV show. I mean, what was that like coming over to the TV side of things? Well, it was it was different because at first it started off with just the, the old uh, mic and mic. You know, you set up cameras in the in the radio and you see what happens, but it just Got a little dry, a little boring, and Hilliard decided to try and you know spice things up with some different things. And before you knew it, the radio was totally out of it. They were doing the Capital C Sports radio show, and we were doing the Capital C Sports TV show. And from there, it's uh, evolved into that's SGTV's best program show. I would say that without uh, any hesitation. Well, thank you very much. That means a lot to. I'm sure the other shows at SGTV would not appreciate that, but hey, I've got my favorite. I've got my favorite behind those camera. You guys are are awesome. So. All right. Well, very good. Alex, a couple of years ago, I came to USC as a journalism student. You <laughs> gave me my first job here at school. As one of your staff writers, I remember I was covering women's volleyball, mm -hmm. and I was covering Columbia Inferno Hockey the Inferno, right? down at the Coliseum. How did I do? You did good, man. You did good, although you lied to me, and you never told me how great you had at the Inferno with that all-you-can-eat buffet they had going on down there. Never told me about it. I go down there one night because he needs a night off, and before I know it, I'm living in paradise. So. This guy right here, he's sneaky. You better watch him. You know, I may have been just a sophomore, but I knew enough to know if you knew what kind of food you were getting down there, you were going to want that oh, gig. You eat Greek pizza and Greek salad. That's a good meal for a college student. It is very true. Now, Alex, a couple of weeks ago, you, you kind of threatened me and said you didn't want a senior tribute. Oh, God. Well, here at Capital City Sports, we do have a tradition when one of our seniors leaves, there is a little bit of a tribute video that we put together for them. There's so much footage to choose from. To say goodbye, a legend like this, as many years as he's been around, like you said, there's a lot to choose from. So, Alex, we're gonna toss it to your tribute video, and here it is. I don't get a senior tribute or anything, do I? Please say you're not doing that. Right. As executive producer of the show, I am in control of what will and will not happen. Please say you're not doing you that. You just worry about being where you need to be at the instructed times. Ah, uh, Burkarth, I hate you. Want me to sing again? That would be nice. Yeah. It's American Idol. Us style. You can go on American Idol. Just do the damn show. Bob. Let's start with the Clemson Carolina game. Obviously a rough one for the Gamecocks. They lose 23 to 21 in their home stadium. Is this the toughest loss for them to take all year? Well, it's probably the one that's going to be most emotionally draining. It's your arch rival. It's a game that you started off. Three words to describe Alex Riley. Slippery when wet. Piece of the Carolina legend, I guess. He's a, he's a legend. Gamecock sports expert. Country mother. Alex Riley, I would have to, I mean, I would have to say future sex offender. 
yeah. Pasty white reporter. Who's Alex Riley? As our season winds down, so does the career of our very own, who's Alex Riley? And welcome into the boardroom here on Capital City Sports, our first edition of the fall semester. I'm Corey Burkhart, being joined by this guy. He's Alex Riley, former sports editor for the Daily Gamecock. He now covers the Gamecocks for the Seneca Daily Messenger. Alex, how are you this week? I'm good, Corey. How are you? Good. Well, we got this week's show. We got our final show the week after the Clemson game. Mm -hmm. And then you graduate, so your time is just running out here. I mean, how do you feel about that? I feel absolutely fantastic, and I'm not going to lie about it. Riley, before I was even, uh, before I even started working for the show, I used to do the radio show, and uh, first time this cemented Riley in my brain as a legend is he predicted that we'd take Auburn to overtime my freshman year on a last minute touchdown, and to a T he almost predicted that game. Does he have red hair? Yes. See? And he's met him. I didn't remember his name. Riley is around. Uh, what do you think, what do you say he contributes to Capital City Sports? Making fun of Jared Munch. He is good on the boardroom with making fun of Jared Munch. Well then, what is what is your favorite moment then of where he makes fun of Jared Munch? Munch, you're supposed to act like you hit record, you idiot. I knew it was recording. We're trying to sneak in for some bloopers. But Munch just doesn't get it sometimes. He doesn't Munch get never it. gets it. He, he, yeah, he never. Just keep doing what you're doing. How do we look now? I know how I look. Pretty bad. Oh, man. oh wow. Sorry. He got the Good Housekeeping Award. No, he was the only one in the game that cleaned up his area and kept it clean. Everybody else I was after with my broom. Riley, if you were an event in ecological history, you'd be the Ice Age. Woo, woo. Don't believe the hype. Don't, don't, don't believe the hype. We could do a rap album. Alex Riley is such a slime bag that one time he went to a strip club in Atlanta with two of his riders. Strike that, one of his riders. He left the other one in the hotel because he was underage. All right, Riley, let's have a good boardroom. Everybody's bringing food. I had a girl from high school, God, please edit this out. I had a girl from high school send me a message the other day. She said, I'm sorry I missed your party, but I'm going to be here for this one. You know what she just did? She just got back from doing it. She just got back from trying out to be a Miami Heat cheerleader. Yeah. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Hey. Oh! Oh! We're oh. going throw Well, the guy's not good. He's not that good of a writer. Sorry. This President's Day edition of the boardroom. Alex, quick trivia question. Which president is on the $2 bill? That'll be Thomas Jackson. All right, he got that one right. Alex, if you were a climate-caused event in Asian history, you'd be the Filipino tsunami. <laughs> and welcome into the boardroom here on Capital City Sports. I'm your host, Corey Burkharth being joined by this guy. He's our April Fool every day of the year. That's Alex Riley, sports editor for the Daily Gamecock. Alex, thank you for being with us this week. Always a pleasure, Corey. The still single Alex Riley at that. He's trucking away hard, guys, but baseball team over the weekend. Alex, you are now 2-0. You will be back next week in the boardroom for Justin Fabiano. Alex, buddy, we love ripping on everybody, uh, but truly, you are a great person. You're a damn fine reporter. You've done well with us uh, the two semesters that I've been a part of the show here. I'm honored to have met you and uh, consider ourselves friends, although you might beg to differ on that end. But 
Alex, you're a big, goofy, redheaded kid who I never would have thought I would have hung out with, but uh, you've been a, like a brother to me, and uh, it's it's been a pleasure to have you here for my first three years of school. I really appreciate you being with me on the boardroom as much as you were and making our show as good as it was. I wish you the best of luck as you go out and try to find a job in print journalism, a business that is going out the way of the dinosaurs. Um, good luck to you, buddy, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. I'm sorry. Alex, I'm sorry. I love you. Beautiful. I love you, Riley. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I love you, man. I'm sure you do. <laughs> All right, Alex, you saw it right there. That's what everyone has to say for you as you hit the road. Before you go, is there anything, anybody you would like to thank? Uh, obviously, uh, this whole student media has been great. Obviously, the guys at the radio that I got to work with, uh, guys at the paper I got to work with, and obviously, uh, this staff has been uh, fantastic. It's been a blast. Hope I've left a good mark. Hope uh, somebody will come along and keep the traditions going as they are now. And uh, Hope things turn out turn out quite well. It's it's been a fun ride, and I uh, hope it's not over yet. Hey, it's been a good ride, partner. I gave you the nickname last year, Alex Two Dollar Bill Riley, because I I'm gonna have to let your secret out of the bag here. Alex has a little tradition and a history of frequenting strip clubs in town. So the entire crew got together. Everybody pitched in, and we got you a two dollar bill. Trade you straight up. He had one to trade me. I have a feeling by the end of the night that is going to end up <laughs> in the underpants of some girl. <laughs> Alex, also, as a parting gift for you, the crew signed our final rundown and script oh. of the year, so we do want to give that to you. Thank you, sir. So you've done it before. You've hosted the boardroom. You've been in the boardroom. So partner for one last time, why don't you take us home? All right. I suppose we can do that. In the famous words of Steve Spurrier, all right, man. We'll see y'all later. This is Alex Riley for Corey Burkhart, signing off from Capital City Sports. Each and every week, a lot of hard work goes into our Capital City Sports shows. That's right, Ed. You don't always get to see the faces that work behind the scenes. So let's introduce you into our Capital City Sports crew. Hey, I'm Cameron Weiderman, a first year broadcast major here at South Carolina. I just started with Capital City Sports recently and I want to give a big shout out to all the guys who helped me. really appreciate the help and I'm enjoying it a lot so far. And I want to thank my family and friends for just supporting me and uh, watching the show. And finally, I want to wish everybody a happy holidays and the Philadelphia Phillies for ending 19 years of pain in my life without a Philadelphia championship. So, thanks again. Hey y'all, Dominique Gray, media arts major at the University of South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina. I want to give a shout out to everybody back at home, everybody represent 5A, Bates House, you know, hold it down. But um, I help edit it with the boardroom, so that's what I did. Um, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, see y'all in Spring 09. Hey everybody, I'm Mike Wadsworth. I just want to say thanks to everyone for watching this year. You'll be seeing more of me in the future. I just want to give a shout out to all friends and family for supporting me through all this. And uh, women's volleyball team, it was fun covering you guys this year. You definitely got gypped in the tournament, but uh, you guys will be back next year. A special thanks to head coach Ben Samara for, uh, for talking after all the games. Uh, once again, thanks to everyone. Have a Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next semester. Hi, my name is Madeline Green, and I'm a first-year broadcast journalism major. I'd like to thank everyone who's helped me so far this semester, and have a very Merry Christmas. Hi, I'm Jennifer Brem. I'm a sophomore and a broadcast journalism major. I'd just like to thank everybody here at Capital City Sports and have a happy holidays. We'll see you next semester. Hi, I'm Tanuka Penix and I am a fourth year journalism student. You might have seen me on the show as co-host, but I've also done a little photography. I want to thank the whole entire crew for the opportunity this semester and I hope you all have a Merry Christmas and I can't wait to see you next semester. Hey guys, I'm Justin Fabiano, assistant producer among other things here at Capital City Sports. I want to thank you all for watching us this semester. And um, I want to give a special shout out to my friend Logan McCombs. He's about a year old and he just underwent brain surgery today. Everything is okay. I want to thank his family for everything they've done for me in the past. 
and I want to wish them good luck in his recovery. Thanks, guys. Hi, I'm Jared Munch, a sophomore broadcast journalism major. I just want to thank everybody for, for a successful show this semester. Our producers and all the other staff members have stepped in and done a great job. It's been a lot of fun and looking forward to next semester. I want to thank my family and friends, dad, mom, Susan, brothers, sisters, there's a lot of you. Uh, thanks for all your support and encouragement. Uh, Haley, Jonathan, friends, you guys are awesome and I appreciate everything, appreciate everything and going out to capitalcitysports.blip.tv and supporting me and the rest of us. So everyone have a Merry Christmas and I look forward to some good old eating. I just want to thank God for giving me the opportunity to kick it. Hey everyone, this is Ed Cahill, your host here at Capital City Sports. You know, I've been working Capital City Sports for three years. It used to be uh, my baby. I'm just the host now. It's Brian and Corey's thing now, but I'd just like to give a thanks to all my co-hosts this year. I know there was a bunch of them and all the people that have been doing hard work and a special thanks goes out to all the people that supported this show for about the last four seasons and all the people that have just been up and working hard for me and, and getting stuff done and it's just been a great experience working with all of you and um, I can't thank you enough. It's It's been the time of my life and I hope it's been the time of life for you too. And Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to everyone. Happy New Year. I love you. Hey, I'm Mark Big Money D Driscoll. I'm the assistant producer of post-game audio and uh, video operations on road trips. Just want to thank Corey and B Walks uh, for uh, letting me join them on the trips. It was a great time. And just want to give a shout out to uh, Joe Papa D back in the 804 and the doc up at Virginia Tech and uh, Slags over at Denny's in Lexington, Kentucky. Hi, I'm Sherry Holmes. I'm the mama of the Capital City Boys. I keep them out of trouble. I want to shout out to all my Northeast people. Happy holidays. I'm Michael Aguilar, I'm the sports editor at the Daily Gamecock. Now that that Riley jerk's gone, you're gonna be seeing a lot more of this ugly mug on your TV screen, so get used to it. I want to say thanks to mom, dad, uh, Kendall, my roommates, and uh, specifically Burkharth because his back rubs made all this happen. Hey everyone, I'm Corey Burkhoff alongside my fellow executive producer Brian Walker. You just got the chance to meet our crew who have done an absolute outstanding job this semester. We want to thank those guys for all their hard work this semester. Brian, why don't you go ahead and thank a few of them? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Justin Fabiano, Fabs to you and I. Jared Munch, Ed Cahill, the station manager. Even John Huey, the uh, not often seen programming manager to make sure we get seen campus-wide. Madeline Green and all our co-hosts, Taniqua, Jen, you guys did a great job. Julia, our guest host, yes. you got a chance to see all of them, mostly in the blooper reel, of course. But uh, you guys all really came through for us this semester. Uh, I think I speak for both of us when I say it was probably the, the best season that we've had in a long time. Yes. Uh, Mike Wadsworth, the freshman coming in. Old Waddy came old Waddy. in, got a lot of action under his belt. He's going to be a star one day, so I'll tell you be what. on the lookout for him. But yes, our crew, thank you guys very much for all your hard work this semester. Y'all have done an outstanding job now. B-Walk, I know you want to thank some people from Atlanta and whatnot. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, First and foremost, obviously, my family, my mom and dad, who watch us every week when we come out online. Um, you know, inside sources tell me my mom really isn't a fan of you in the boardroom. She doesn't think you're real photogenic on camera, but that's okay. The rest of us appreciate it. Uh, my dad always watches, listens to me on the radio. My sister Allison, I'm pretty sure she hasn't once turned on the TV and watched this in her dorm yet, but that's okay. We still appreciate your fanhood anyway, and you stopping by to see us when we're out filming and you walk by. Um, on the road this semester, a uh, great few road trips. Thank you to yes. Sarah for showing us what Ole Miss is all about down in Oxford. Hotty toddy. Yep, Slags in Kentucky for making me sleep on the dirtiest carpeted floor I've ever seen. Our hotel manager in Nashville for not having a roll away, so sticking Mark on the floor next to the air conditioning unit. I believe he caught AIDS and pneumonia in that trip from that floor. Um, you know, just everyone we've encountered, the, uh, the man in Alabama who sold me the overpriced bottle of Pepto-Bismol on the way home, thank you for that. Uh, the Clemson catering service for the chili dogs they gave us made my drive back to Columbia one for the ages. 
It's just, it's been a great season. How about that truck stop on your way back from Kentucky? Okay, to the guy in the truck stop on the way back from Kentucky, that was the best $20 motel stay I've had for two hours of my life because I was too tired to make the drive all the way home otherwise. Um, you know, what can you say about the places we've been that really haven't already been said about the worst events in world history? There's nothing quite like Columbia, but you gotta love the road. That is a very true story. Before we go, I would like to thank my mom and brother in Richmond, Dabberk down in Georgia, Bagsy, DFETS, Steve Fetz. A special thanks to Jonathan Fetty, who helped us create our website last semester, capitalcitysports.blip.tv. And of course, we couldn't do it without the big help of old Dano, Dano. back in Richmond. So, B-Walk, I, uh, I think it's time we get out of here. Well, I know I probably won't be back quite as much next semester. I'm moving on to greener pastures and uh, better executive producers with senior semester. So just in case this is the end of the road for me, for the last time, for Capital City Sports, I'm Brian Walker. I'm Corey Burkhardt. I'll see you in January. Hey everyone, this is Corey Burkhoff in the Capital City Sports Newsroom here on the third floor of the Russell House. It is our last night of production for our fourth season. Real quick, just want to thank everyone for watching us throughout the semester. Now this season we mixed it up a little bit with our host video. We used to have Meredith Harvey as our regular co-host, but she graduated and is now working in Myrtle Beach. So what we did is we mixed it up for Ed Cahill each and every week. We had Jennifer Brim, Taniqua Penix, Julia Melvin, Catherine Walker, and Madeline Green switching up on a week-to-week -week basis. And what it made for some pretty funny moments. So on behalf of our entire crew and executive producer Brian Walker, I'm Corey Burkhardt. Thank you for watching us this semester. Have a great Christmas break. We'll see you in January. And welcome to the fourth season here at Capital City Sports. I'm Ed Cahill. And I'm Jennifer Brem. Coming up on this week's show... Blooper there is an end of season blooper reel. Nice. Coming up on this, this week's show... Sorry. <laughs> Something tells me you'll make a few minutes. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb there and say that's probably the case. Three, two... For more on the game... There's a bug in my eye. When you say two, count, uh, count the... I have lip gloss on. Was that like a corny smile? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, how about I just don't smile? All right, we got a guy staring at us. F him. Peace. Kiss my. Yeah, ass. buddy. <laughs> you are terrible influences. Okay. But first, the Gamecocks were looking to make a statement against Wofford on Saturday. Okay. Don't know. And... <laughs> But first, the Gamecocks were looking for their first SEC win in over a year. Sorry, I was up there. I didn't, I didn't even look at yours to see when yours ended. Because does it, doesn't it sound like I'm saying SEC when I say it? After the Gamecocks lost to Vandy and Georgia, they were looking to right the ship against the Terriers. I just asked why you said upset win. Because it sounds like you're upset about the win. It doesn't sound like that you're happy about it. Works. Doesn't it? Who says right the ship? I've pirate never before. heard that before. Pirate captains. Well, I'm glad I don't sound like a pirate captain. <laughs> well, that doesn't make sense. Can we just change it? No, we can't change it. I wrote it. You read it. That's how this works. See, I missed it, Ed. She refuses to um, give me a body shot for my first ever shot, being 21. That's just selfish. That's right, Ed. That's right, Ed. That's right, Ed. You were terrible. Absolutely terrible. In their last game before Thanksgiving, the un- Should we like hug or something? Should we hug? Yeah. It was like good luck or something. Good luck. Please don't do that. You scare me. <laughs> we need tweakers over here. Huh? <laughs> send it over to Brian Walker for the highlights. Let's send it. <laughs> what does that mean? Fluffers, tweakers, right. for porn. Hey, cool. I don't know what that is. Keeps. This is definitely harder than it looks. <laughs> what do they do? <laughs> they keep you like nipples hard or something? <laughs> I didn't know that existed. That's right, Ed. That's right, Ed. That's right, Ed.
That's right. Okay. <laughs> Not in public. Hey, don't tell Kendall. Yeah, I was gonna say you don't tell Kendall. Fair enough. But like, <laughs> like the sexual intercourse. Boy, or or your card, like they. <laughs> the what they do? Someone to suck your in between shots. See, I thought it was like just one continuous like <laughs> roll. I didn't know they split them up. A friend or a girl you may or may not have impregnated. Oh no. Nope. But Aguilar is pretty good. See. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is and and want much to be our tweaker, whatever that is. <laughs> okay. You know, B Walk's sister's never met a guy she didn't hit it off with. <laughs> and he's been my sister tonight. <laughs> SEC play last home Friday night against. After the Gamecocks lost to Georgia and I don't know. <laughs> oh. Could the Gamecocks get a win in their season finale? I cannot like read that word. I, I went to kindergarten twice, okay? I can't read very well. Since coming to Carolina, freshman quarterback Steven Garcia has found himself more in the news for his off-field troubles than his play on the field. But Saturday night... What did I say? You just start talking so you can check... Hey! <laughs> you talk how you're going to talk! <laughs> you just... Hey, yo! No. Well, I'm sorry. I've never done this Fire off a couple lines off your script. Just read some of that so he can check you. I'm excited. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not very exciting. So. Slow down a little bit. After a solid return last week against Ole Miss, senior wide receiver Kenny McKinley was looking to break one of USC's most heralded records. That's not it at all. I, That's like I don't like talking like I'm in a nursing home. <laughs> okay, I'm not thinking, I'm just speaking. <laughs> I can't believe we just said that out loud. I'm Madeline Green and I signed all my text messages with my first name. Iris up, we got a little zebra action. Okay. See ya, Cox. Yeah, seriously. We know you're Madeline Does Green. it say it on my text? Yes. Oh my god, I didn't know that. Because Cox is such a loser. I mean, he really is. My clothes are still on. Oh. Huh? Fabs, if you got a problem with that boardroom, suck a <laughs> Like you do all the time. All right, well that officially wraps up our fourth season here at Capital City Sports. But don't worry, we'll be back for our fifth season when we get back from Christmas break. In the meantime, check us out online at capitalcitysports.blip.tv as we'll be uploading highlights from the men's and women's basketball teams. You can also find us on iTunes. Just search Capital City Sports and download us to your iPod. For all of our crew here at Capital City Sports, I'm Meg Cahill. And I'm Madeline Green. Thanks for watching this semester and we'll see you back here in January. Have a great Christmas break.